Hello Sofa Squad and welcome back to the Sofa. Y'all, this is a quick breaking news update. I am literally sitting here shaking. You already saw the thumbnail, you know it is about Faith. Okay, when I saw this come across my Twitter feed and people started texting me saying, 3.30 Chapel Hill, you know, they're releasing information. I was like, I am going to die if it is like we crack the case, that kind of a thing. And then I was like, you know what? I pray it is that, but then I'm also gonna be realistic and be like, what if they just found some more information and they're releasing it for whatever? Well, let me tell you what, when he started talking about he, I mean, one of the police officers, one of the investigators, you could tell he was leading up to saying, we finally made that arrest. Thank God, okay? So we're gonna very briefly talk about that, what we know so far, and I'll very briefly recap this because I did put out like a little community post saying like, y'all, there's been, you know, a, uh, a break or some new information come out, whatever. And some people were like, you know, I haven't heard of this case, whatever. So I'm just gonna very briefly, for those who are not familiar, give like a quick, and I mean quick, because this is another one of those cases that you can go down a rabbit hole over. Uh, but I'm gonna give like a quick two cent version of what took place. So Faith was only 19 years old when she was found in her apartment in Chapel Hill. Her life had been brutally stolen from her, okay? It was no joke. Now, here's the deal also, she was a UNC student and the chain of events that night, we're going to go over them very briefly or whatever, but there were some weird things that kind of took place with like a little note and this and that, and then obviously an unsolved mystery. Okay, so Faith was staying with a friend of hers at her apartment while she was waiting for her own apartment. So the evening in question of these things that took place, the two friends had spent most of that evening together. So they had been at the Davis Library at UNC, and then they decided they were going to go out, and so they got home a little bit after midnight, got ready, whatever they wanted to do, and then they headed back up to a place where it was called The Thrill, but it's since been closed, and they got up to like Rosemary Street, that area, a little bit before 1 a.m. So they hung out there and they left that bar a little bit after 2.30, like 2.38 a.m. They go back to the apartment and they were driving and well, go, they were using Faith's car, her Nissan Altima. So they go back to the apartment and then her friend leaves again at like around 4.30 in the morning, say. And the friend comes back around 11 a.m. And this is when she walks into a horrifying scene. So she would find Faith, her, you know, life was stolen. She was brutally attacked in multiple ways. And she would say that there's blood everywhere. She was obviously unresponsive at this point. So there was a handwritten note on a fast food bag. Now I'm not gonna say the exact word, but I'll be putting the picture up here of it. And it said, I'm not stupid, be jealous. And so that, again, that's a very quick version of it, y'all. So the case just kind of stalled and it was nine years and nine days, almost to the day that they made the announcement today. Now, one thing to keep in mind is there was apparently blood everywhere, yada, yada, yada. And detectives and all the authorities and stuff like that, they were like, look, we will make an arrest in this case. They did not get any DNA matches along the way, but when they spoke today at the press conference, they would credit a DNA match finally came through. Now, investigators and whatnot that spoke at the press conference today would say this highlights the importance of doing all this backlog DNA you know, testing the evidence because this is what can happen. You can come across someone. Eventually, if they're not on the map, they'll eventually probably do something else that will put them on the map and then the arrest can be made. So anyways, who is it? What is it? Yada, yada, yada. Okay, so the guy is in custody. They arrested him this morning without incident. He is being held on no bond. Thank God. Uh, he is 28 years old. So I mean, think about that. He's 28 right now. She was 19 years old. So do the math, like nine years ago or whatever. I mean, these were kids killing kids. It's so sad. His name is Miguel Enrique Olivieres. I'm probably butchering that last name, I'm sorry. Um, but again, he's being held in Durham, uh, no bond. And literally this is just happening. I've been going and looking on the inmate search to get a picture of him and his name's not even in there at the time of this recording. So that's it. I. I hope to Lord that this can help the family and I don't even want to say overcome or begin to heal because I feel like that's 
you know, negating the tragedy that happened because how do you get over that? But at least starting with some accountability and justice. Now, family members got up there and spoke. The father got up there and he was like, you know what? I mean, he was holding back tears, bless his heart. And he was like, you know what? When I got the call this morning about this, it took me back to nine years and nine days ago. And that's the thing. I'm just like, this man has lived for that many years trying to figure out what happened to my daughter. Who did this and what are they doing to other people? Uh, the, the mother spoke as well. They were all very appreciative of the investigators and how that has gone. And the investigator said, you know, we made a promise. We are going to catch the person who did this and they did. And so it just took some time. So anyway, I just wanted to come on here because I was like, that is some of the best news <laughs> that I have heard in a hot minute in true crime. Uh, I just, I'm so glad that the wheels of justice can start to turn. Now, obviously, innocent until proven guilty, the whole nine yards, we get all that. But I feel like the wheels of justice have begun to turn in faith's favor finally. So that's it. I will totally be solved or be solved in this case. I'll be following this case. This is actually local to me. Um, so I was really shocked when I saw it because I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that this is, you know, finally some traction. So again, stay tuned. I'll be updating y'all as we find out more information and my heart and my prayers and all that go out to her family, friends, those who knew her, her, you know, college mates, all these people. Uh, I hope that this can begin the process of healing and seeing the wheels of justice take place. And until next time, I'll talk to y'all then.